Welcome, guys. Uh, we um, we got to shift gears here. Um, that 24-hour period is long expired from last week. You know, coming into this week, so we've been grinding on um, looking at our our next opponent, a team that is uh, you know seven and one and very well can be ranked. Um, probably should be ranked in what they've done. Uh, Coach Shepherd's done a really good job. You know, while he's been at Fresno State and his. Uh, stops uh, prior to Fresno State, and it's uh, no different this year. They got an offense that has been very productive, um, scored a lot of points, very efficient in the pass game, and a defense that has uh, created a lot of negative yardage plays, and uh, you know what uh, has has actually gotten a lot of takeaways as well. And that being said, they are one of the top teams in the nation in the turnover margin. So there's uh, plenty of things that. Um, we're studying uh, personnel we're looking at, structures that we're looking at in all three phases of the game. Um, but, uh, you know, it was, it was good for us to, you know, to have our most complete game and be able to learn from it and still have plenty of room to grow, you know, as we move forward into this next week. Um, much like we did over the bye week, uh, we took the same approach after our last game and um, really, you know, be able to hit pause and look at the things, uh, not... I think it's 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 vitally important that we're able to hit pause after each and every game and really focus on ourselves and give ourselves a little bit of a window there where um, we can address the things that we did well and figure out how we're going to continue to do those well. Um, pour some um, pour some gas on that fire and then figure out you know the things that we need to continue to improve on as we move forward into the next week. And, and a lot of times, as we've talked about from week to week, the challenges look different. You face different offensive structures. You face different defensive structures. Of course, the personnel is quite different. Um, and so those are the things as we work through the beginning of this week for our next conference game that we've been focusing on. Questions? Any of the defense, so obviously, you know, as you said, played its most complete game. What did you see out of this defense on Saturday that you hadn't seen all season? Uh, definitely. Um, our ability to play uh, with better eye control, which led to us playing faster in our initial fits and then the way we pursued to the ball. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, we played with good fundamentals and techniques at the line of scrimmage, which uh, most of the time got us ahead of the chains. And uh, we were able to get some pressure on the quarterback, and that always helps a tremendous amount. But ultimately, too, one of the biggest things is just simply tackling, you know, whether it be in run plays or certain pass plays. Uh, being able to eliminate the yards after contact by being efficient tacklers, which eventually, you know, those yards uh, start to stack up. And so while we did a good job with, with that stuff, there's, there's still room to, to grow. Um, and it will call for us to grow as we go down the stretch here with each one of these opponents that, you know, we'll, we'll play. Wyoming's had a lot of success running the ball. They didn't have any on Saturday. What were the key factors there after you've seen the film and whatnot as well? Why were you guys so good against the run? Well, um, the coaches did a good job putting a plan together and the players executed. Ultimately, the, um, you know, there's one thing about this game. It's working as a team. It's uh, spending the time handling the process. Really felt like as a whole, the defense, um, not only through uh, the bye week, but also through the week of prep for Wyoming, you know, we stacked two good weeks there of, of prep in terms of guys. We've been talking about the competitive maturity and how, you know, that's not just when we get on the field, but that's the process of which it takes um, to be efficient, uh, to be consistent on the field. And um, as we've talked about, we're not young anymore. We got some young personnel on defense, but we're not young anymore. We played a lot of football, and now it's time to apply that, um, continue to grow forward. Again, this week presents a whole, you know, you know presents a lot more challenges. Uh, you know, the, the offense is quite different that we're going to face this week. And so uh, there's certain things that we, we did in the game last week that um, we must do better this week. But ultimately, in the run game, the guys did a really good job playing with uh, fundamentals and techniques um, and being consistent with the fits. And the more consistent you are at the line of scrimmage, then the second level can fit. Uh, we had some players that played with, uh, again, uh, great eye control. We're able to see their keys and, and make some negative yardage plays or some plays at the line of scrimmage, which put us ahead of the chains. Almost every week, Mad Dog's come off the sideline and converted a big play, whether it's a third down, whether it's a fourth down. What does that say about his mentality? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's the two quarterback system which we've been operating out of, um, you know, and as we've gone through, it's, it's uh, you know, it's been awesome to be able to see these, both these guys play and be productive and score, um, move the ball down the field. 
it, you know, it really comes down um, to us being more efficient, which in the passing game we've been more efficient. Uh, since we've been doing it on third downs, you know, we've been more efficient. Like we've talked about, we've had more offensive production. We've scored more points. Um, so, we, we, you know, it's, it's something that we can continue to build off of because our guys, you know, the, in, in particular the two quarterbacks and their mentality and their preparation and how they go about it. Um, and, again, it's, it's the want to. It's the willingness to do uh, whatever it is that we can do to star in a role to help the team win. What is it about him that he's put himself in, in the position that he is currently in where I mean, he's, he's probably earned to play the majority of the reps at least last game? So yeah. what, 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 how has he put himself in this position? Well, you know, I think a lot of it, too, comes down to the stuff behind the scenes that people don't see just in terms of um, his preparation. He, he obviously has a high football IQ, right? Um, he has a great feel for the game when he's on the field in terms of his ability uh, to lead in the pre-snap. Um, that comes with preparation and having the confidence. Uh, and then obviously once that ball snapped, to be able to work through a progression, to um, having the understanding of how to stay on time with his feet within the pockets and, and the pre-snap reads uh, from the certain coverages that he gets. Um, and so we've got to continue to build off that. I mean, shoot, the team we're playing this week, uh, you know, is taking the ball away a lot. And they got one corner with four interceptions. And so it's going to present a lot of challenges this week. Uh, they, they've gotten a lot of sacks. So I believe one part of that, too, is how we've been able to protect the quarterback. And we're going to have a great challenge with that this week, being that they've got a lot of guys on, on this Fresno uh, defense that have got uh, TFLs or sacks. I mean, how tough is Maddox, too, and in terms of his running ability? One of the more impressive plays of the game, right before he hits that touchdown in Prince, he takes off. I mean, he took a pretty good lick, and then he comes back in, hangs in the pocket, and gets the ball up over some guys who are, like, jumping. And puts it in the only spot yeah. that Prince can go get that thing. Yeah. But in terms of his running ability and toughness, how well, that's the thing, too. I mean, even our, our rushing yards all together as a team have been up since we've been doing using both guys. Um, you know, but like we said all along, like Mad Dog's capable of running the ball, too. You know, just like TG. Okay, don't, don't forget about that explosive pass play TG hit early on in the game as well. But, you know, it's pretty impressive to see Mad Dog run behind his pads, as you, as you were talking about. And then it's football, right? You're going to run the ball. We've got to take care of the ball. Um, and we got to take care of ourselves. We'd like to see those guys, you know, take care of their bodies a little bit, in particular the quarterbacks a little. Um, but, uh, you know, it's part of the game. You know what? And it's exciting to see when you have quarterbacks that can run the ball and can put the ball down the field. That is very exciting to see and is very tough on a defense. And so um, to be able to put the series together where he did run the ball, um, got us some yards, and then was able to finish that drive off with a, uh, you know, a touchdown pass was pretty impressive. Um, again, it's it's. It's an awesome opportunity to have both of these guys where you can put TG in the game and, you know, we're in a critical situation and TG pulls the ball and keeps it and gets around the edge. And, you know, with his speed, there was no one could catch him. And there we are, we score another touchdown. So how we continue to create the rhythm is going to be the biggest part. How we're efficient, you know, on third downs is going to be the biggest part because that allows, obviously allows us to get another set of downs and uh, um, keep drives moving. And we, we had just before... Just before the half in the last game, you know, we it was a 13 play drive or something like that, where we were able to score, you know, going into halftime, um, be able to have a, the defense go out and play two minute, you know, end of half and be successful and then come out after the half and score again. I mean, those those are the pieces that we want to continue to build on how we move through a game, how we get to the to the game plan, get to the, the calls we have you know, ready to go. That's something that we want to continue to build on. Now, again, as we talk about all the time, we can't expect it to look exactly the same from week to week because we're playing different defenses. And having two quarterbacks allows us to do um, what's necessary. Using the, two go ahead. using the two quarterbacks, your vision is becoming a little bit clearer with every game. And we can kind of watch and see what you're doing with Maddox obviously dominating the second half. In all seriousness, this question, why, why is Taylor starting? Because, uh, I mean, he's earned the right to start. And again, we saw what we did on the first drive, too, correct? Now, we got to take care of the ball. That's the bottom line, too. Okay. And it's not, we got to take care of the ball. We've got a huge emphasis on that. And uh, um, 
shoot, we came out, scored on our very first drive on an explosive uh, pass play and, and uh, was able to execute a two-point conversion. So, um, you know, there's, there's, again, there's things that we're able to do really well. And when we're able to see what a particular game plan is, then, you know, for Bush to have the ability to, uh, to use two quarterbacks, you know, how we see fit has obviously been productive. Our numbers have gone up in, you know, almost every category. Uh, turnovers, you know, you're minus six for the season. Uh, just how do you look at that in these big games down the stretch here? I mean, winning the turnover margin usually means winning the game. And that's been, you know, what, what are you seeing there? I guess how big is that to, to get that figured out on both sides of the ball? Yeah, we just spoke about it, you know, taking care of the ball. You take care of the ball. Um, the guys that are explosive with the ball and take care of the ball are going to have the ball in their hands. Um, you know, we're not going to be perfect, but uh, there needs to be a high level of consistency of, of how we're carrying the ball and how we're taking care of it. And then, you know, there's certain things on defense that, you know, you, it really comes down to playing with um, great eye control, being in the right position, play, playing with great effort. Uh, a lot of times tackling, simply tackling well creates uh, takeaways. Um, playing with great uh, leverage and uh, great technique and coverage and, and obviously using your eyes to put you in position uh, will allow for, for us to get more takeaways as well. Um, creating pressure on the quarterback. In the last game, we created pressure on the quarterback, and we were able to get a takeaway. Think about some of the best players in program history. You know, it's not the five-star recruits. It's guys like Avery Williams who walked on or Kellen Moore who was a two-star recruit. When you look at Maddox, you know, he, he didn't have a ton of, ton of offers. Obviously, he's not the biggest guy. But in some ways, is he, is he the kind of player that this program is built on? Um, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of guys like that that have come through here. I mean, shoot. Alex Tubner is another guy that's walked on and, and is starting. A, um, T. Crow is another guy that has walked on and um, has, does a whole lot for this team in a lot of different ways, whether it be on offense or, or special teams. And, you know, um, again, Mad Dog, Mad Dog's a guy that has uh, been able to, to really grow and thrive here. Um, and as we said all along, as long as if guys deserve a role, we're going to find a role for them. Um, in whatever phase it is of the game, whether it's offense, defense, or special team, we're going to find a role for them. Uh, this, it's a long season, and as many people um, that we can use and put them in position to help us win, we're going to. When you've seen a lot of the quarterback from Fresno State. What, what are his best attributes, and why has he been able to do what he's been able to do? Uh, very, very efficient and quick with his decision making. Um, the scheme calls for. You know, in a lot of cases, for for him to be able to get the ball out of his hands uh, very quickly, and he's very good about making decisions, um, being able to identify and see things uh, in the pre-snap, and uh, be quick with his feet and his release. Um, and then, uh, you know, they've they've got the vertical pass game to go along with it as well, whether it's you know off run looks or a drop back pass game. Um, and and they've done a really good job, you know, with the new quarterback and. Uh, you know, and really a wide receiver core that has been extremely productive. I mean, they got two wide receivers um, that uh, they both lead the team with 41 receptions. So that's that's a lot of production there. You've seen a lot of good quarterbacks. You know, some of the best in the nation. How does he stack stack up against them? Yeah, some of the best numbers. I mean, he's up there with uh, touchdowns thrown this season. Um, his completion uh, percentage. I mean, when you're facing a guy that has 68 percent completion percentage. Stacks up pretty high. They've played some good teams, some good defenses this year. So um, we have. Um, that's that's been a huge part of the challenge this year. Is, is we've seen some good quarterbacks. We've seen some uh, wide receiver cores and some tight ends that have been shown to be very productive over the course of the year, even after we've played them. Championship game a couple of times. A lot of big games there here. I mean, what is it just about two quality teams and a lot's usually on the line when you when you play these guys? Year in and year out, that's what it is. I mean, we, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, it's been going on for a long time. Uh, this, both programs have uh, had a lot of success. Um, as we said before, uh, Coach Jeffers has done an unbelievable job, and so, um, in this conference, uh, you know, it, there's usually a lot on the line when when these two teams play each other, uh, whether it's. Uh, you know, and it's really been, there's been cases where we played each other twice, you know, for obvious reasons in a given year. And shooting one particular year was back-to-back -back games. Offensive line, 
seven guys, they all appear to be healthy. That's obviously a luxury, but it's also, you've got a lot of decisions to make within that and how you juggle those seven guys. So how, how difficult is it to find playing time for offensive linemen if you've got seven healthy guys? It's not that difficult. It's a lot better than not having seven, right? We've been in that situation where we've been eight, nine deep into our offensive line. It's, uh, you know, again, it's, we won't make the negatives or difficulties out of the things that are positives. We'll stay out of that space. And again, we'll find roles for guys to be able to have, um, even if they're not playing O-line. You guys have scored at least 30 points now in six straight games. You're averaging 30 on the season, which is most since 20. You're at 427 yards a game. You're most since 19. Uh, yeah, 19. Um, obviously, you made a decision last year. You wanted to find somebody that the mix and mesh with what you wanted to do. How, how happy are you with what you are doing right now on offense, even if it might not look, you know, super physical at one position at times, I guess? Yeah, there's no question. And that's that's the thing about it and that we've decided on, you know, holistically here as a family is it doesn't matter what other people want it to look like. It matters what our personnel can do very well. And we've got to find ways to continue to do that and grow it. But, uh, you know, as we've seen, you know, you adapt and you grow throughout the course of the season. Uh, teams that will have a, champ, uh, a chance to play for a championship are going to adapt and grow uh, throughout the course of the year. Uh, they're going to find ways to develop personnel and use personnel diff differently as you go through the year. Um, but it's, uh, it's been awesome to see here, especially um, how we've been able, um, you know, we've been able to uh, um, generate a lot of production on offense. And to be quite honest, with you, we take care of the ball and we're going to be in really good shape. Um, um, for all the things that are said or not said, like Bush has done a good job, plain and simple. Um, we have young players that are stepping up. We have old players that are stepping up. We've played with eight, nine, you know, deep into offensive linemen. You know, yeah, we have them all back now. That's not a problem. That's that's a benefit. We have George back now. That's a benefit. You know, not just from George's production, but him as a leader, and to be able to see and, and do the things we did last week when when we have, um, you know, the majority of our offensive personnel back, uh, and, and to be able to play the way we did against that type of defense last week, we've got to. Um, be able to build off of that because the defense we're playing this week is shown to be um, just as strong and in even some cases, you know, production wise and stats wise is better. A lot of former players have told me that, that games at Fresno State create some of the most hostile environments they've ever been in. Why is that? You know, it's been that way for a long time. Um, it's one of the places you go when you go on the road, um, you know what it is. Uh, typically, it's you know, there's going to be a lot of people, the, the stadium's going to be full. and. Uh, you know, I think it's uh, yeah, a unique setting in the sense, too, you know, where the locker room is and the way you've got to enter the stadium. And um, Again, it's uh, like we always talk about, though. I mean, it's it's never about the external. It's always about uh, the internal and how we handle our process and all those things. But, you know, it does make for, um, you know, year in and year out when we do play and, and you go on the road to play this game, you know there's a challenge out in front of you. What makes Fresno this year different from last year? Um, you know what? The difference, obviously, there's a difference. OC, but Pat was there last year. So uh, there are some similarities. There are some differences within, um, you know, some of the things that they are doing um, in the past game. And there are some things, uh, slight differences in the run game as well. Um, but, uh, you know, they're getting a lot of production like they did last year. He's a guy who kind of epitomizes the next man up mentality for you guys. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, he comes, yeah, sure. comes in when Ash or when George goes down, then George comes back and Ashton gets in. It's awesome to see him get that touchdown. Yeah, yeah. That. What's he? Uh, you know, how's he really improved and matured as a, a college football player throughout the season? Yeah, I mean, we've gone from you know early on in in the year when George went down, and to be honest with you, almost everybody in that room went down, and Breezy, you know, got put in there. It was a, it's a lot. It's a lot. You know, on a, on a freshman running back, you may not think it's that much, but, um, you know, if, if we sat the average person, more than the average person down in a room and took them through protections of, you know, blitz packages and stuff like that, they'd be completely lost and have no idea. I'm just being honest. And so when a freshman comes to this level or even obviously – um, that demand gets higher when you get to the next level, to the NFL. That's a big part of it that people don't think about. 
you know, because your your number one job as a running back, you know, outside of carrying the ball is to protect the quarterback. And and there's a lot to be learned there. So it's been awesome to see how he's progressed and grown. We got to keep growing him. Um, it was good to see him get his opportunity and, and score a touchdown last week. Um, to see that big old smile on his face, you know. Uh, so, you know, just like a lot of our other younger players, um, we, we've got to continue to find ways to help these young men grow and thrive as we go down the stretch here. How does that quick learning kind of help, you know, help, you know, kind of integrate him into the locker room and kind of, I don't want to say gain the respect because I'm sure he already had it, but, you know, even kind of increase it, I guess. Yeah, the younger, player, the younger players in this program that gain the respect are going to do it um, by being mature individuals, by handling themselves right in and around the facility and by being ready to go when we get on the practice field, that's what's going to gain the respect from the older guys. And usually what happens with that is they're able to have an impact on the field. They're able to start within a role that they have and then grow that role. Um, and, you know, the veterans here, the older guys here, has been this way for a long time. We're going to help these guys. Um, it's not just the coaches. you got, you know, guys like George that are helping uh, Breezy. Um, as other running backs that were older when he got here once helped him. And so that is something that has been a part of this place for a long time. It's not just at that position, it's at all positions. Breezy, a guy like Prince, you know, that are trying to fight for earned playing time. When they get that first touchdown, like what does that do to kind of show them that their work's paying off and like really help kind of, or a guy getting his first pick on defense? I mean, it, it would seem like the big play like that would really motivate those guys. Yeah, I mean, that's to, to be able to uh, pour in the amount, the commitment it takes, the sacrifice it takes, uh, the consistency within the hard work that it takes uh, to be able to do something like that, to, to be rewarded with, um, you know, a play that, as you're talking about, may help the light come on and, and really not so just for that moment, but in terms of the understanding of what it takes to be able to create more of those plays, the preparation, the process that goes into it. Um, Again, we've seen more than a few guys this year that maybe weren't here last year or didn't play a lot last year where that light's starting to come on, and it's pretty cool to see. Um, and, and this week, starting with uh, tomorrow's practice, um, we're going to have some fun tomorrow. It's, it, we're we're going to compete. It's going to be uh, very, very competitive on the field tomorrow. Um, we're going to bring a, a lot of energy as a team, as a coaching staff, as players. Um, and go out there and relish the opportunity we get to to prep for this for this next opportunity. What's it like? Have you ever been in a room that, that is so young and then after seeing them, you know, their hard work pay off and paying attention to small things, what's it like to come back on you know, Sunday, Monday, see the light come on and try to replicate it with them? Yeah, it's, it's not easy, right? It's not easy. Um, and we say replicate. It's uh, every single week, you know, yeah, they're, they're, the schemes that we're, we're working to implement and put together um, may be very similar, but every week is a new week. And when, when, when uh, especially as a defense, right, because you're reacting in a lot of situations to who you're playing. Um, and every week is a new a new week that you got to bring to life. And what does that involve? What does that entail? How does a young player learn how to do that? When they learn how to do it, they do it, and then they have some success on the field. There's nothing better than that. Uh, you know, because ultimately the result of that is, is I want to do it again and I want to do it better. Um, so that's what the opportunity we have um, in terms of our, our prep today, how we watch film, how, you know, the players watch film on their own today, how they're going to do that, how they're going to study, how they're going to prepare, how they're going to show up here tomorrow morning, you know, is, is uh, you know, some of the coaches were, were talking to them about yesterday, you know, showing up and being out in front of your coach tomorrow morning. How about that? How about we do that and have fun um, and, and show up to meetings with, with questions and, you know, uh, bigger picture questions that we can get to because there's only so much time you get um, within these meetings and to be able to cover things at the pace we need to, it requires the players really to do a good job prepping. George Lani, in, in terms of what he represents in this program, and, and I guess more specifically, how did he come through 
Saturday night because you're obviously going to need him in November. And if you ever look at his stat numbers in, in November, he's a beast in November. So taking it to another level during crunch time, just just talk about George and, and his representation of this team. Yeah, it, even beyond just being on the field, as we talked about, whether it's with the young players that are in the running back room or young players in general. Again, you know, we said it the last couple of weeks as George started to work his way back in. Um, George has been a, a huge part of uh, working behind the scenes with uh, the younger guys in the program, the development squad, and being a part of some of those lifts and things like that. Um, but uh, uh, the production that George is capable of having on the field, um, he's been here for a while. Everyone knows what that looks like as we continue uh, one week at a time to go along. It's, uh, it's awesome to be able to have you know, two tailbacks like that, three as we uh, you know, obviously continue to develop Breezy and, and T. Crow, who always shows up, you know, in certain situations when, when it's needed. Um, and so uh, I think that the way that room is, is growing, uh, the overall production of that room, you know, is not only on the coaches, but on a guy like George, too, who is a huge uh, leader. It seems like um, you guys have a long time about doing your 111, but Andrew Simpson is certainly starting to stand out amongst the, the, the 111. <laughs> Um, what, what has he been able to do these last few games that he's really become a, a playmaker for you guys? Yeah, he did. He did a nice job in the run game last week. You know, and it's really the things that he had his best week of practice last week. We'll say that right out the gates because that's what always starts. With. I know it sounds cliche, but sayings are what they are for a reason, right? Like you practice well, chances are you're probably going to play really well. Um, and he did a really good job um, with his run fits. Uh, much better job with being disciplined with his keys and his reads and which allowed him to be able to trigger and hit the line of scrimmage faster in a couple of situations where we saw uh, tackles at the line of scrimmage or in the backfield. And then, uh, um, you know, he was able to be productive in terms of uh, generating pressure on the quarterback as well. How fun are these trophy games to play? And I mean, obviously having something to, something tangible that you can take back with you home to Boise that you're playing for. Well, I mean, tradition and rivalry is that's that's what makes college football fun. Um, so I know uh, uh, that is a big part of it, but I don't know that we'll talk about that one time this week. With the um, things the game Spence called on on Saturday, and, yeah. I mean, you guys got in a probably for the first time in one game all four quarters. You guys are in a very good rhythm on defense. Yeah, no no question, and, and so. Like we said, very proud of the way the coaches came. And it wasn't just on Saturday, right? It's what uh, um, Coach D and the rest of the defense staff has been doing the last couple weeks, um, which obviously uh, very proud of those guys and bringing it together so that uh, the players can truly understand and grow and be better. And, and so as we've spoken about already, the cool part about that is we got a lot of football left to play, and we've, we've got the opportunity to continue to grow and get better. Um, but it, it obviously was visible in the hard work that Coach D has put in with the defensive staff and uh, the game he called on Saturday and the positions uh, he put the defense in. I think George mentioned um, somebody talked to the team last week, and I can't remember the acronym that he brought up, but it was something about maybe not letting uh, one bad play influence another bad play or something like that. Yeah. I don't know if that rings a bell or who was it, or maybe that message stood out to you too. Yeah, we were fortunate. Um, there was a retired uh, Marine lieutenant here in the Treasure Valley, uh, Lieutenant Klebe. Um, he uh, was here visiting a particular church and some friends of the program. We were fortunate enough to have him come speak to our program. Um, and he is a, you know, he is a man that endured a lot during Vietnam um, and was able to survive uh, um, some some pretty uh, bad things that happened, and, and he delivered a really good message uh, to the team. He's a man also that was involved in football and decided to leave football to, to go into the military, um, you know, during Vietnam. And so uh, he, he had a football background, and still does, loves the, loves the game, but um, really spoke on a message that was enduring to everybody, you know, about um, times you got to be able to forget it and drive on. And that's no different than the next play mentality. Um, and to be honest with you, it's uh, from one, one week to the next, too. Uh, like we said, it's a 24-hour rule, and it's time to get back on it and get going and, and you know, bring, bring this week to life one day at a time, compete, attack each one of the days, and 
the reality of it is, too, one thing that he talked about is just being our personal best each and every day and being grateful for the opportunities we have. Anything else? You do an Halloween tomorrow night with your costume and the girls. I did Halloween last night, and my costume was T. Crow. And um, no, we did we did Halloween with uh, we did Halloween with all our families here and our team, our family all together last night on our Sunday night dinner, and so it was awesome. We appreciate all the wives and all the kids uh, putting uh, candies uh, and trees together for for our team and being able to sit down and have break bread last night in our in our Sunday night meal. And, um, it was cool to see all the kids dressed up and uh, feel the players as well. Who so, who had the best costume? There was a lot of good costumes. Um, I don't know. You guys will have to ask the players that this week when you get a chance to talk to them. I'll leave it at that. Say it again. Did you have a pair of, of jeans shorts or did you have to borrow those from I, did, I didn't necessarily have a pair of jeans that I can that I could chop up at the moment yesterday, but uh, I manufactured some. But you know, you know, I came with some uh, short shorts. <laughs> <laughs>